Hey guys, this is John. I hope you're all doing well. Just a quick announcement before we get into today's video. I will actually be playing an over the board tournament this coming weekend, May 27th through 28th. That's Memorial Day weekend here in the US. And it's in Charlotte, North Carolina. If you're familiar with the Charlotte Chess Center, shout out to the Charlotte Chess Center. They're fantastic. Highly recommend checking them out if you're ever able to in person. And I just mentioned this because many of you ask about my over the board activities, what tournament I'm playing next, the famous question, uh, John, when are you, you going to become a grandmaster? <laughs> Which uh, is never easy to answer because you can't really plan for that per se. I'll tell you straight up, this is not a grandmaster norm eligible tournament. This should be a little more laid back. It's actually a series of two rapid tournaments and a blitz tournament over the course of one weekend. So a lot of chess. But I wanted to mention it to you guys because there might be some game broadcasts. I'm not sure. Um, and regardless, even if there's not, I'll surely have some uh, takeaways from this event to share with you. Maybe do a little YouTube content, probably not while I'm there, but I know Charlotte, the chess center has uh, filmed some of the games and I suspect they're probably gonna do that again. But I will definitely link the information for this tournament. We can take a real quick look here. Yeah, so it's a G45 event for one of the events. So game in 45 minutes per side with I believe a five second increment. Yeah, right down here, time control. 45 plus five. Uh, interestingly, FIDE rapid rated. I actually didn't know that. I don't even know if I have a FIDE rapid rating, so I might get one in this tournament. I definitely have USCF regular and quick ratings. So yeah, pretty quick. Um, that's the longest of the three tournaments, and you can see the round times. 10.30 a.m., 1 p.m., 3 p.m., 5 p.m. They knock it out all in one day. And then that's uh, the next day, rather, there is a rapid event, another rapid event, and that one is 10 plus three. So 10 minutes with a three second increment. I don't think I've ever played that time control. So how many rounds is this one? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six rounds. You can see the various prizes. This is pretty common that there's like under prizes eligible as well, in addition to open prize and a plaque as a trophy. Yeah, so six rounds, 10 plus three. U.S. Chess quick rated and FIDE rapid rated. And then the Blitz event um, after the rapid on Sunday. And that is five double rounds. So you play two games against each opponent, 10 games total, at a time control of three plus two, which is the official FIDE Blitz time control. Um, also kind of interesting because I've been playing a lot of three plus O online. You see many players do that. That's a pretty common online time control. You don't see much three plus two online though. Like Title Tuesday is three plus one. You don't see a whole lot of three plus two, but it's nice to have that two second increment when you're physically moving the pieces over the board. And trust me, it goes by real quick. <laughs> Sometimes you're not even able to physically execute moves. If we go to the uh, registration and entry list here real quick, you will notice a couple familiar faces if you follow streamers. So yeah, in the Game in 45 tournament, Grandmaster Alexander Bortnik is playing. Yeah, he's the top seed right now. I'm second. Uh, looks like we have FM Donald Johnson. I won't read off all the names here. A lot of local players too. So, you know, good chances I'll be paired down quite a few of these games, you know, virtually all the games, no doubt, unless they get some last minute higher rated entries. Um, there's different sections here too. We can check out the Rapid Tournament. So again, the Rapid Tournament on Sunday, Danya will be in the field. So I think he's in Norway right now, but he's coming back and he's slated to enter the Rapid event. That'll be really fun to see Danya. I'm looking forward to um, hanging out with him a little bit. We're friends. Um, so yeah, Danya Bortnik again in the field. Uh, Vishnu Vanapali also in the field. Some of the same players as before. Usually if someone plays a tournament like this, they're playing the whole weekend or multiple events. And then, yeah, just got to take care of business against the lower rated players, right? Because there's a lot of lower rated players and many of these are kids. Many of them are underrated. It's going to be interesting. And then finally, the Blitz tournament, kind of the same story. So lots of games being played uh, by me. How many games is that? That's uh, four rapid game, four game 45s, and then what was it, six? And then 10 Blitz games, so 20 games in two days at fast time controls. I've been practicing my Blitz, as you'll see today in this video. And yeah, wish me luck. I'll link this down below and maybe take a look at Chess 24. They might carry some games. And um, stay tuned to my channel. I might post an update or something. And also the Charlotte Chess Center channel. 
I'll link them as well. So thanks as always for the support, guys. I'm really pumped and enjoy the video today. It's a doozy, especially at the beginning. All right, and we're off. We're playing I am Tim Ina, 2737 in this first game here. Let's go for D4. Transposition into an exchange slav. I've been playing a lot of this lately. My opponent looks pretty quick here. Bishop B4, that's a little bit unusual. Interesting approach. I'm just going to castle here. Actually take on uh, C3. I'm a little surprised by that. I'm pretty happy with this position so far. I definitely have to say. Let's play H3. Wow, some serious aggression from my opponent right out of the gate. I do not believe this at all. For black, let's take here. Thinking about taking on E4 now. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And then I'm going to play Knight E5. Yeah, black just came blazing right out of the gates, but they've got some issues. I guess I kind of see the point. Maybe they're looking for a kingside type of wedge, but I can play like g3, for instance, g3, king, g2. Okay, but then queen h5. Hmm, okay, let's play this move first. Let's go here. Maybe a possible rook lift, I'm thinking. Also slows black down a little bit in terms of getting their bishop out. Not using the clock as a weapon this first <laughs> 18 moves of this game, but I'm pretty happy with my position. Yeah, I like the look of this maneuver. So bishop here, I'm going to play bishop f4. And I think with rook g5 swinging over, this is already looking pretty dire for black. even have a chance to take a sip of my coffee. So yeah, because rook g5, I pick up the g4 pawn. Black's position is pretty much in shambles. Maybe I would lose the c4 pawn, but I'm so active. Black's king is so weak. If they go to the corner, there's bishop e5 ideas. This looks pretty over, but don't want to count my chickens before they hatch. Yeah, so trying to get in shape for Charlotte. Been a little while since I played over the board in any serious capacity. Okay, let's take with check. Black has to go king f7 here. And rook h5, queen h5. Rook h5 looks kind of nice. I think I'm going to go for that. Yeah, go after this pawn. So I'm thinking if rook h8 at minimum, I have bishop e5. So it seems hard to guard this. Queen g6, queen h4, for instance. Attacking on the dark squares, also hitting h7. This rook may be coming into play at some point. Up on the clock. Yeah, rook g8 played. Okay, but take. Guess they're going to try rook g7. Still probably should take. And give a check, I think. Force queen g6. Mm -hmm. Take, take, bishop e5. Yeah, okay. I see your point. Well, let's take. It's also queen e5 here. Queen e5 might be good. Let's play that check. <clears throat> yeah, and I guess we'll bring the rook over. I'm not going to get too complicated. Rook g8, I'll play bishop g3. Just securely defend. Maybe this coming. Let's go here. If I give a check, there's rook g7. It just seems hard for black to attack anything in this position. So just cutting down on their counterplay as of now. Yeah, let's push. Black's desperately trying to get a queen trade in. So their king is so weak. C6 looks pretty good. C6, take, take. I'm going to keep queens on board, though. I don't want to. Cause too many issues on the clock. Let's go check. Take. And send the bishop in. Yeah. Oh, no! Guys, that's what can happen when you try to use the clock as a weapon. <laughs> or when you just get overconfident. Yeah, we got we to gotta play another one. 
<laughs> Chess has a way of doing that to you, I tell you. Hung my queen in a winning position. I started to get a little bit nervous on the clock, though. So, you know, humbling moment. Good moment to, to, to get in. All right. Um, let's try to recover here. Could take on this square. Yeah, I actually like the look of that. Let's go for it. Take. Play here. So egregious blunder. One move to end the game in that last one. But let's try to recover here. Mm. Got to mark up the loss as well. I have a feeling white's going to do the same thing, try to offer a queen trade in some capacity because this position already looks pretty bad for them. Maybe they'll go b4 or something, yeah. Let's play knight e4. They could go here because if this, I guess they're, again, going to offer that queen trade. But let's play a5. Let's go a5. Um, oh, I wonder if knight d2 is actually working because queen f4, I would have e5. Just noticing that now. But this looks like a pretty good move as well. Play C3. Yeah, I think... I think I'm going to go for this. I think we both missed that. Like, this doesn't really work for white. Yeah, queen G3. Let's take, take. And defend this pawn. Mm -hmm. E5. Knight f3, probably f6. Okay, goes there. I could take, take. Bishop c2 looks pretty good. Ah, but then they have knight a5 to maybe cause a few issues. So let's go here. So if knight takes, I think I can take and then take b2. Should be able to stop that pawn, especially with bishop d3 coming. Yeah, they're going to try to take with the bishop. <clears throat> it's just mildly annoying what my opponent's doing. Let's actually go here. Play the bishop around to help guard this. And then the play should kind of gravitate towards this part of the board now. And I'll go here. Try to start organizing different avenues for play. E4. Hmm. Yeah, he wants C4. Interesting move. Um, just bring this up. Take, take. Really wants C4. Yeah, it's just annoying enough to cause issues, but I'm going to go for this. Uh-huh. You start bringing the king up. Okay, but there's a threat there. Let's do this. Possibly I can get f5 going advance a little bit too. Got to watch my time though. I mean, this player's tenacious. Can't really expect anything, anything less from these players, but definitely tenacious. Hmm. Let's just sprint here. Get these pawns rolling. E-pawn going. Yeah, they're gambling at this point, trying any sort of confusion tactic possible. Let's push this. Um, I'm going to take and actually give this up, the bishop. Kind of rely on all the pawns. Oh, there's knight takes, though. 
So annoying. Still interesting position. Got to get the king up, though. Miss knight takes c4. Okay, take, and they can't take my rook. So now I can send this in and promote. Can I beat the clock, though? I think I can pretty much pre-move this. Well, it's just going to play with the knight. They're going to have to give up the bishop soon. Yeah, this is a draw. Oh, wait, one on time? Oh, man. I thought I played a move to make it a draw, but... All right. Uh, that's tragic, guys. I lost those two games, but <laughs> that's what uh, can happen. So let's look for another game. Yeah, that one was interesting. If I have a moment, I'll analyze it. But the whole, like, knight on a5 with the pawns coming should be winning, but I couldn't quite find a clean way to do it in time pressure. And I also didn't manage to eliminate their last pawn. <laughs> yeah, so definitely frustrating, but, you know, I tend to deal with frustration by keeping it in perspective as much as possible and mostly laughing. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, we're playing online, online blitz. And three minute, a lot of stuff can happen. Okay, let's go knight bd2. Yeah, I think I've had this position somewhat recently, actually. Um, let's just play rook c1. Mm -hmm. Let's go here. So I'm thinking of take, jump in, and threaten this pawn. Try to recover in these last few games. Still plenty of chess to be played, and I'm going to record a few of these videos, actually. So I'm going to be playing a bit today. Okay. Nice situation on the clock here. Let's take... Um, rook d1. I think I'll get ready to play e4. I just want this defended. Wow. Busting through. Okay, take... I think take makes sense. If they could take here, but then I take here, I don't think that should be good for black. So I'd anticipate this capture. This looks pretty dangerous for black opposite this and with this pin going on. Maybe queen f5 after this. Bishop h3 comes to mind. Okay, they do take. Yeah, so these are the positions that are um, time sinks because it's hard to say which way I should capture. I'm going to take this way. Bishop takes, and I'm thinking knight b3. And simply uh, pile up against this pawn. Queen f6, I think there's here. All right, nice time situation. Yeah, Black's doing a good job of keeping it together. How about Queen F5? Let's just play something active looking that keeps the pressure on. A lot of tension still that Black has to navigate with a minute. Okay, probably take now. G6 here. H6. Seems like I can always defend that knight. Ooh. Oh, fancy. So they want um, takes, queen takes e5. It's a nice little shot. Now, I don't necessarily have to take that. <clears throat> yeah, I might actually keep this. Let's go here. 
keep the time edge. Mm -hmm. And now I'm thinking take and play the knight into c6. And if take, I can take here. This would be a blunder because take, take, knight d7. Okay, so how about here now? a7 also hanging. Hmm. Oh, that would hang a pawn. Uh, I'm not sure what to play here. G4, maybe. Yeah, really not sure what to do here, but let's just throw the decision back at them. Um, take. It's a good move. I'm going to take d5 now. Doesn't take. Okay, capture. Um, let's go here. Kind of strengthen things. Maybe knight b5 coming next. Trying to guard this square before I capture. Time scramble incoming. Hmm. Okay, so they're going to more or less sit there. Okay. Well, notch my first win. It's off a rematch. We played a couple mini matches here. Yeah, not a pretty ending to that one. I was up a piece. All right. 27-21. Fourth game in, in this little session. Yeah, so in such situations, it's really hard to stop thinking about those first two games and just how I completely blew winning positions in both. <laughs> the first game being most egregious. And it, it's tough. It never gets easier, guys, but you have to keep your head down. You have to keep things in perspective. That one game in the scope of your chess career is pretty much meaningless, honestly. It's just one data point. But I'm not going to sit here and claim that I'm not going to be replaying Queen D8 in my head for the next, you know, many, many games. Okay, let's take... Nice little structure here without the light square bishop. Let's take this way. Play may gravitate towards this file. Bring this out. Maybe rook c8, rook fc8. Mm. Okay, so I think white wants b4, knight b3. Understandable. Can I beat them to the punch? Yeah, let's go here. Okay, so both sides have somewhat weak pawns. This looks pretty typical for this situation. Queen b5, maybe. Let's do that. Wouldn't mind the file getting open so I can eventually play rook a2. Okay, simply bring this over. I think we're going to see a mass trade pretty soon. Down the C file. Pretty move this. Maybe I'm getting a little something to work with now. I feel like queen b1 was kind of passive. I can consider queen e2.
Okay, nice time edge right here. Through 19 moves in the position. Hmm, rook c2. <laughs> Let's go here. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Doubling. Okay, try to pressure this in the near future. The square is possible for white to infiltrate on, but knight c6, rook b7, I think is fine. So I'm giving white the file, but I'm hoping that the pressure here balances it out. They go for that one. Hmm. Um. Let's play here. Try to trade on our own terms. I might take that night, but I'm unsure yet. Haven't completely made up my mind. Because the dark squares are rather weak if I do. Okay, take, take. Be here. They're threatening on F7. I think this is okay because this is defended. Nice little defensive move. Even on the clock. Great move. Actually goes back. Hmm. All right, let's take now. And then I think take here next. Yeah, white has to play somewhat broken chess here. Turning ninety two. Okay, I'm going to try to create some mating net ideas. Oh, maybe that was good. Uh, wants bishop f8. Ah, too slow, too slow. Well, I'll chalk that one up to my lack of mouse speed, but good defense by my opponent. They avoided getting mated. <laughs> All right, one more game to play here, folks. And then I might go back and look briefly at that second game in particular. Okay, 2,800 here. Yeah, I think in that last one, that's maybe illustrative of a problem I've had before, which is, being a little too slow to convert winning positions. So, something to work on. Again, hard in a three-minute game. Okay, my opponent playing rather slowly in the opening here. I wonder if they're having connection issues. Yeah, it looks like it. Connection problems. Problems. Don't know that I played this player before. I've seen their name before. Hmm. 
Mm. I might get a walkover win here. Yeah. Nothing really to do about this. We'll play another game because this is a non-result, really. Okay. Let's look for a new one. So I pick up some some free rating points. <laughs> okay, I grok. I played this player before. Let's go, Scandy. Here we go. Let's do it. All right, an E5. Yeah, that's a move that you can expect to face in a lot of your games. Not a very good move. This is already pretty comfortable for black. I would gladly play this position every time. But let's see what happens. Let's go queen b6 here. Yep, take and take with the queen. I would expect h3. Yeah. Go here, try to send the knight to f5. Uh, or d4, potentially. Play h5. I don't think white's going to go here anymore. But you never know. Now let's do this. Hmm. Okay. Defend the center. Could potentially trade here. Could also play knight d4. I think I'm just going to do this. I'm okay with this swap. Knight's still in a good blockading role. G6. Seems like this bishop has a hard time being meaningful yet. I can probably castle here. I think this whole situation is fine. Yeah, maybe queen e6 blockade just so white can't go here. And next, I may try to play on the queen side. What's this move about? So a6, knight c7, really? I'm going to dare white to play that move. I don't think they should go for that. Nah, I don't think that works at all for white. They're going to... Yeah, they just go back. Okay, so let's expand. Mm -hmm. Maybe d4 now. Attack this pawn. Maybe c4 to come. I'm giving their knight an avenue in. But at great cost to them, I think. Oh, there's knight g3 too. Trapping their queen. Let's do that. Or trapping their rook, rather. Take. So if I take the queen, then maybe they can claim the pawns are coming forward. So maybe I should go here. Might be a little more annoying. I'm willing to take on that damage because I want c4. I want that knight to get kicked out of e4 mostly. Okay, comes back. Seems natural. Let's play it. Still some work to be done here. Got to watch the clock, too. Probably reposition these rooks in the near future. See if I can get c3 in or something. White well, kind of has to sit tight here, I think. Not a whole lot to do. They want me to take so they can take here and continue blockading. Yeah, that's like a sit tight type move. But then they go this. Okay. Take, though. I will happily trade. Okay, I think they're going for f5. I think that's like their only chance. Um, maybe just here. And start playing actively, come into the position. Attack that knight. Mm -hmm. I might be willing to sack the exchange. I think I might. I think I might do that. Take, take. There's bishop f4, though. Um, yeah, these are the type of messy situations where I make mistakes. So let's try to keep the pressure on. Takes there. Okay, let's throw this in. 
Oops, that was a bad pre-move. Okay. Come here. If I get queen e4 in, I'm good. Time, time, though. I know there's bishop g5, but it doesn't seem to work right now. Look, f3, I can take, take, rook d1. Okay, white's spending all their time. They got to do something. Don't know what that move's about. Let's just go here. I think they're trying bishop g7, maybe. Okay, and they just resign. Okay, so I salvage an even score in this session, two and a half out of five, after losing those first two games. Yeah, those first two games were really, really rough. I know you guys were cringing at home. Queen d8. I still can't believe I played that move, and also that I couldn't eliminate that pawn in the other uh, game. I just wanted to take a look. Yeah, so this first one, I think probably most of this was fine. I think if I go queen f6 probably in this position or throw in a check first even, that should be pretty much decisive. <laughs> Always nice to see the force mate when you uh, <laughs> plundered your queen in the position. So, But who among us cannot relate to this? I think most everyone can relate. But yeah, I played this game fine. Winning, up, winning position out of the opening. I was really skeptical of what Black did here. Actually, not as favorable of an eval as I thought, but... Uh, and then, also really quickly, what about this game? I mean, this, this opponent's resourceful. I give them credit, because in this game, too, they made it very complicated in an objectively completely busted position. This whole concept, E4, in this position was annoying enough that it created issues with um, trying to carry the c4 idea all the time yeah rook f6 okay that's not a move that occurred to me at the time but it makes a lot of sense yeah i mean by the time we get here it's not even showing that big of an advantage probably even found a decent way through giving up my bishop soon but i made a big mistake by not eliminating that last pawn i think i assumed the position was a stalemate here and in fact all i have to do is play one more move and it is a stalemate but I didn't have enough time. So, yeah, I, <laughs> I'm pretty embarrassed by those games. But I am happy that I salvaged this session. And um, I think picked up the pace a little bit in the last three games. So, yeah, in no games did I feel like I was worse out of the opening. So that I'm going to take away as a positive from this using the clock as a weapon video. All right, so again, preparation for the Charlotte tournament where I'm going to be playing Rapid and Blitz. And I'm going to play another little session here. I'm going to take a quick break and get right, right back at it. So thanks as always for watching, guys.